fantastic. It's wonderful when technology works. I love it. Great. Well, uh, thanks um, specifically to the coaches who've joined us today. Um, I think you know that you play an important role in, in how we're able to deliver 100% fun soccer to kids every year. But um, it's always nice to hear from, from all of the parents out there as well. And when we asked the parents why they gave us the overall rating that they gave us, which was very high, and we'll get to that in a second, um, I did a little wordle. And what that is, is I just plopped all of the words into this spreadsheet. And the words that come up more often are bigger. So you'll see highlighted there, coach is nice and big, coach is, is nice and big. And uh, so that's, that's an indication of just how critical parents think of, uh, of coaches in terms of being able to contribute to uh, to their kids' enjoyment of soccer through the year. So how did coaches do this year? Well, better than ever. Um, you guys are awesome. To, 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 to put a fine point on it, um, wouldn't be a wouldn't be a presentation of mine if I didn't add a few stats. So before we get into the awards, I thought I'd tell you just how great you are. When we first started doing this survey last year in 2019, I thought that those were the best scores that you could probably get. Uh, so for our fun integration theory categories, we break it down into positive coaching, learning and improving, and a couple of other things as well. But these are the two categories that, that you coaches have a real impact on. And so when we look at the percent of parents who responded either very good or excellent to each one of these statements, or they agree or strongly agree with each one of these statements, you look at our coach treated the players and referees and parents with respect. 100% of parents said that you did that this year, which is just absolutely incredible. Our coach encouraged the team, 97.8%. Our coach was a positive role model. Again, 98%. Our coach gave clear, consistent communication, 98%. Um, our coach had well-organized practices as well, 98%. Um, and all of that is up. It was 92% last year. Uh, for learning and improving, learning and improving. Uh, sorry, I just have to move my own thing over here. Um, the, the parents felt that their kids were challenged to improve and get better. Almost 99% said that. 100% of parents said that their kids were given fair play time. And that is something that is really special to our, our league. A lot of competitive leagues, all competitive leagues, in fact, and most recreational leagues are playing their, their strongest players more than the other players. And the, so those other players just don't get enough of their playing time. 100% of parents said they, that, uh, yeah. that for us this year. Their kids had many touches on the ball. Our coach allowed mistakes while staying positive. They learned new skills and can likely play at the next level. Um, in short, our parents love you guys, and our kids, all of the dragons, love the coaches. It's absolutely fantastic. So from the Dragons um, uh, board, I just wanted to, to, to give you guys a great big thank you very much for everything that you do. So tonight, we are here to recognize the best of the best. So these are the coaches that not only did everything that we listed um, on the previous slide, but uh, they were able to do just that extra special thing to make um, that time for the kids on the field this past summer even more special, even more fun, and even more engaging. So let me start um, with Adrian. Adrian, were you able to find your list? I'm good. I'm good. All right. So I'll pass it over to Adrian, who's going to tell us um, who the active start coach of the year was for female. All right. All right. So, so um, for the U4 U6, it was uh, a new age group this year, and we had a lot of uh, coaches that uh, put in a lot of time. And, uh, Sorry. Uh, Can I just interrupt quickly? Leah, you okay. might want to put your microphone on mute because we're getting mad feedback. Just while Adrian's presenting and then cross off. It's better. Perfect. 
Yep, perfect. Yeah. Sorry about that. So um, we have. I'm going to start with the honorable mention. We had uh, Sarah McGregor, who coached U5 Rome. Uh, she was uh, basically awesome. She was creative. She uh, helped kids improve. Optimistic, optimistic, thoughtful, and really uh, drilled those kids and uh, communicated with the parents and uh, got everything, everybody on the same page. So uh, that, was, that was a great uh, first year for her, coaching with the Dragons. And from that, we go to the winner, who was uh, Colleen Boise. She coached uh, UCS, and she also she was actually coaching two teams at the same time. Congratulations, Colleen. Woo. All right. Okay, Adrian, keep going with. Um... Oh, that's me again. Um, we have a few more uh, honorable mentions here. Uh, ben Ellis uh, coached on uh, on a pinch. He came on and um, filled in when uh, one of our coaches uh, didn't come through uh, because uh, they had to, to cancel. Their kid was not interested in playing. Uh, he coached you for Brazil. He moved. Uh, he scheduled around and then got uh, got the kids involved and uh, got things done. At the same time, we also had uh, Pierre Etienne Lambert, who coached another U14. Uh, this was a Wednesday team. We uh, experimented with uh, two different nights for the first time this year, and it was uh, it was a great success, especially because of the coaches. Um, Pierre Etienne helped not only coach his team, but also when we were able to have two teams, uh, sorry, we had the bigger rosters of 10, we merged two teams and coached basically two groups at the same time. But the winner is another coach that coached two teams, Francois Menard. He coached uh, U5 Tokyo and also you, uh, I'm not sure which other team he coached, but it was the uh, same thing. He coached Wednesday and Friday. He did an awesome job. He had one team that was uh, French speaking only and he did an awesome job. Um, I'm really not sure what else to add, but just keep coming back. Well done, Francois. We love, we love the coaches that uh, come in and help, and especially the ones that uh, put in the extra work. All right, thanks very much, Adrian, and congratulations to the uh, the coaches for Active Start. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, next up, uh, it's still you, Adrian. Fundamental, U7 and 8. I might need a break. <laughs> U7 and 8, all right. Um, for uh, female, we had quite a few coaches that really came through for us. Um, first of all, I want to um, recognize in honor of Adrian Salamunovic, I hope I pronounced that right, and Erika Kerber. They were volunteers. They had no skin in the game. They, uh, I reached out to her and I said, we're desperate for coaches. I know you've played. You helped with other teams. Are you interested? Not only did she coach, but she also recruited three other coaches. So for that, Adriana, thank you. Uh, really appreciate it. You, the kids had a lot of fun. Uh, they, uh, I keep hearing from, uh, from the parents saying that you guys did an awesome job. So that's one honorable mention. The other one was... Lynn Cleofas, she coached a U10 team and a U8, sorry, U12 and U8. Um, same thing, we love those coaches that uh, put in the time and uh, take on double duty. And speaking of that, the winner, um, she's, uh, she's getting used to that feeling. She won last year. That's uh, Fiona Brooks, who coached U8 Boys Berlin. Um, again, she uh, coached two teams, U7 and U8. And um, what can we say? She was coach of the year last year, and she does it again this year. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well done. Do I keep going? Right. Might as well. All right, so we got uh, the micro U7, U8 uh, male coach of the year. Uh, and, and this one, this one's interesting because we had uh, basically eight teams and five of the coaches were named Michael. And all of them did an awesome job. So honorable mentions to Michael Hoffler and Michael Machargo, Machargo, sorry, as well as uh, Andrew Proctor. Um, these guys did an awesome job uh, coming in, and um, under um, you know quite a bit of pressure, they went from uh, practicing in those eight squares to starting and playing games 
from one one week to the next, and uh, they had to move around a little bit from Orleans to Leitrim and uh, here at Potvin. Uh, they, uh, they did it. And uh, speaking of Michael's, the winner, uh, Michael Army, Michael, he um, he coached two teams as well. Uh, I went, I, I knew him from coaching in, in the past, and I had a team that had no coach. And I, I mentioned I had no intention of, uh, you know, bringing it up to him, but I just mentioned that I was looking for a coach. Said, well, what can I do? It was on a different night that uh, his kid was playing, so I said, I'll pick it up, I'll do it. So he uh, he went and uh, and coached that team. And I, my understanding is that team is the best uh, hydrated team in uh, the Dragons. He kept bringing them uh, drinks every week, and the kids loved it. Not just because of that, but also because of the, the practices that he put together. And uh, I think it was the winning attitude, too. So congratulations, Michael. Congratulations, Michael. Congratulations, Michael. Yeah. yeah, and I noticed in a number of the comments there, there were the, the three Gatorade uh, played prominently. So I think uh, <laughs> I'm going to play it for his team next year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sponsorship. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, you can take a bit of a break, Adrian. We're on to mini girls or Macompe. Um, yep. So for the mini girls this year, uh, we had uh, quite a few comments from the parents. So it was always great to see the kind of feedback we get from the parents on the coaches we have out there. Some phenomenal comments came back. You know, the words like passionate, engaged, fun. Uh, really taught my kids to love soccer. It's always amazing to see these things and to see that in, in that short time span, which was essentially eight weeks, uh, that the coaches did such a such an awesome job in getting the kids to have fun and to enjoy a bit of summer and a bit of something normal for them to finally be able to focus on uh, during that, uh, that pandemic. So in looking at all of this, it was obviously a, a tough decision. We have a few honorable mentions uh, to point out. One of which is with us, so uh, Ken Pedersen gets one of the honorable mentions for that age group. Uh, Ken, you definitely get my vote for the most eager to get going at the start of the year. It was great, it was great to see your communications and see how, how excited you were, and I have no doubt that fit into how excited the girls were to play as well. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then uh, our second honorable mention at that level is for our U8, our U7, U8 winner, uh, Mike Laramé Charmano, also an honorable mention at this level. So some of the same comments came back, you know, the fun time that the, uh, the kids seem to have on that team. And our overall winner at that level is a coach that uh, coached for the first time last year, stepped up again to coach this year. And uh, judging by the, the feedback in the comments, he once again did a phenomenal job. So congratulations for the Mini Girls Coach of the Year, Adam Hendricks of U12 Paris. Congratulations. All right. Well done. Okay, Mini Boys, Michelle. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, so this year we had uh, a lot of people stepping up at the uh, the mini boys, the U10 and U12 uh, boys level. Um, we appreciate that. There were a lot of excellent comments about all the coaches that I had this year. So thank you everybody for stepping up. Uh, we have honorable mention for uh, Mustafa Jamal from U12 uh, London. Brad Daw, that, that's coming back year after year and after year, helping out with coaching our teams uh, for the U10 Boys London. Mamal Al Soheli, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, for our U10 Boys Berlin. He actually stepped up uh, as no one w was willing to, uh, to coach the team. So thank you very much for stepping up, uh, Mohamed. Uh, Sandy Biko, same thing, U10 Boys Edinburgh. Um, same thing, you stepped up and we very uh, appreciated about that. And for uh, our winners, we have two. Uh, from uh, U12 Boys Beijing, uh, uh, Chris Monette and Brian Tang. Chris Monette uh, has been uh, volunteering for coaching uh, his son teams for uh, several years now and doing a great job. Uh, congratulations, Chris and uh, Brian. Congratulations, Chris and Brian, and, uh, and thank you very much for your support. It's wonderful. Yeah. 
Is it my turn now? Should I go? Yeah. yeah. So this is Leah doing uh, the Coach of the Year presentation for the youth girls, which is our youth 13 to 18 year olds. Um, so our honorable mention goes to Sabrina Prem. She is a University of Ottawa student who was a friend of the family of one of the girls on the U18 team. Uh, she came in in a rather interesting year, so she did a couple of weeks of practice, and then we went straight to games with the U18s and they were mixed with the uh, U18 boys. And so Sabrina had to be not only a coach for practices, she had to be a coach for the sidelines also quite often with uh, players that she didn't know because the teams were mixed up quite often. And at other times she had to be a team of or a, an official. So she would act as a referee on the field. So we were really appreciative and I know she bonded really well with the girls. Um, they quite liked her. Uh, for our winners, we have a duo who've already been mentioned as an honorable mention at uh, age, I believe, U78. Uh, Adriana Salamunovic, again, Adriana, I hope I said your name right, and Erica Kerber. Um, these are two young former competitive players who took on a U7 girls team and a U14 girls team. Uh, from my perspective as a U14 girls age group director, the thing that I love the most is that um, I got uh, positive feedback on them from players. I got positive feedback from on these two girls from other coaches, and I got positive feedback on them from parents. So, I mean, they were really, really well-liked, well-respected. Uh, some of the things that were uh, talked about the most when it came to these two girls were how the parents could see the skill improvement in their players. They were blown away by how much in that four week of uh, four week span of practices, how much their players actually learned skill wise. So that was very exciting. Um, they quite often had to work with other coaches on the sidelines for the games because the games at U14 girls were combined. So they had to work with other coaches, coaching styles with other players. And the feedback from the coaches at that age group was that they were amazing. They loved how they were with the girls. They loved their level of soccer knowledge. Um, they did an incredible job. And I really, truly hope that we see you both back again next year. Congratulations to Adriana and Erica. Fantastic job. Wonderful. Let's move on to youth boys. Jim. Okay, uh, we had uh, eight coaches this year. Can you hear me, guys? We had eight coaches this year. They all did very well. Uh, we have an honorable mention in Matthew Crawley. And a, another one I like to make just off the cuff here is Bill Jr. Coleman, <laughs> 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 who coached, coached two teams, one at U14 and one at U15. And the winner of the thing here tonight is Ross Strict. Now, Ross has coached for us for a number of years. And uh, he's also a guy that you see helping out the community everywhere, like hockey and et cetera. So uh, he well deserves this award and he's been around in our league forever. Thanks, Ross. All right, congratulations. Congratulations. Does a fantastic job, absolutely, every year. Congratulations and thank you. All right, thanks, Jim. All right, and our final award is for the, the coach of the year. We had a lot of um, a lot of submissions this year. Given that we had so many fewer players, I was quite uh, surprised at how how uh, how many submissions we did receive. And the the final winners really stood above the others in that they not only received nominations from both the teams that they were coaching, but uh, they also received nominations from other coaches, other parents. Uh, you know, apparently, uh, they, they had quite an impact. Uh, we love the fact that you know, girls came in and they were willing um, to coach girls. It's great that when, when a, a developing player can look up and, and see a female coach, really inspires them to do more. And so our coaches of the year for 2020 are Adriana Salamunovic and Erica Kerber. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations.
Thank you so much to all of our coaches this year. And uh, as I mentioned, you make such a difference in the lives of these kids. Community was more important than ever this past summer. And uh, had to put up with a lot dealing through COVID and people's extra emotions and changing practice schedules and only doing practices one month and then only games the next. And it was quite a season, quite a season. But thank you all so much for your support. And we hope to see you all again next year. Thank you.